Well, welcome back. Now that we have learned about object-oriented programming, we're going to move on to an application of all our theory, which is GUI programming, graphical user interface programming, using the FLTK C++ toolkit. Now, uh, we have our first example here of a simple FLTK program and we have to unlike I'm going to make some comparisons to Python here because we my students have learned the Python version of PY FLTK first before the C++ version so we have to actually include all of the widgets that we are going to utilize explicitly here. So unlike Python, we can't just say import everything. So here we're going to go ahead and inside int main we're going to go ahead and make a window. And then we're going to start adding a widget inside the window. Again, constructors are x, y, width and height. Now there's no label on this one. I've left it off. However, I have created an FLPNG image here called flag PNG. Now, one thing we're going to see in a second is that when we use images, we have to compile with dash dash use images in the FLTK config command line command that will compile our code for us. Then we're going to put the image of the button to the picture, to the pick object we have created in the previous line, and we're going to resize it using the built-in copy resize of FLTK. And then we're going to show the window and run the event loop. Okay? So let's give it a shot. Okay, so we're going to compile this, and there's the command we're using to compile it, FLTK config, use images, compile, and then the source code name. And we run that, and it compiles. Now let's run it. No errors there. And there it is. So there's our button with a flag picture on it. And that's all that this program does. Now let's go back to the source code and I want to show you how we're going to comment it out here. We're going to comment this first part out and I want to show you how it's done using pointers. There we go. So essentially we've got the same program here but now notice we're using an FL window pointer called win and then we're allocating the window on the heap using new and now when we do uh, begin we're, instead of doing dot begin we're doing indirection right because it's a now win is a pointer so we have to dereference the pointer and access its member same thing with button we're going to create it on the heap using new same code just slightly different syntax and then same thing for the image it's going to be a pointer and we're going to allocate it with new again and now we have to use the indirection arrow instead of the dots every time including here as well okay so let's save this and we can compile it again and everything seems really good and we'll run it again and no problems so it's kind of cool to see both ways of doing this. Okay, one with pointers and one with everything uh, just on the stack as we did above. Okay, here's another example, but this one we're defining a callback function for the button here on line 22 and we're actually uh, writing out the callback function up here. Notice that all callback functions now take an FL widget pointer. 
They also take a void pointer, although in this case, I'm not going to, uh, I don't have a void, I don't have any, I don't have a second argument here on line 22 that I'm sending. So I don't really, I don't really, um, I shouldn't really have anything here because there's nothing on, this, on the, on the second argument. But I could have a second argument and it has to be a void pointer. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, um, here what am I doing? I'm casting on line 8, casting O to a FL button pointer. Notice why am I doing that? Because O is actually an FL widget pointer, but I know that here I'm sending a, I'm sending, a, but is an FL button. So I'll cast it to the correct widget type, and then I can call. Well, I didn't really need to do that. Why not? Because here's the thing. Um, label is not specifically for a button. It's actually a widget method. But that's fine. Either way, uh, I like to be explicit and clear. That's why I've done it by casting it to a button. Side note here, notice that the callback is, is on a button widget. So when, you, when an event occurs for this button widget, it is the widget that is passed to the callback. But callbacks have to accept an FL widget pointer, not a button pointer, because a widget pointer is the grandparent or the granddaddy of all widgets. It's the base class. Therefore, I am casting it here. But let's say, for example, I didn't. If I did not cast it and I just used O here, this would be okay. And why? Because I'll, I'll run it now and show you. Okay, so there's no errors, and it still seems to work fine. I can click it, and there's no problem. So why did I have to cast it? Well, specifically, label, resize, and redraw are actually base class FL widget methods. So they work fine. But if there was any specific function that was a method of specifically button, then I would have to cast it to an FL button pointer. Okay, so we're going to compile it now and we'll run it. And everything looks good. Let's see if the callback works. And it works. It resized the button and it changed the label. So that was good. So here's my next example. In this one, I'm actually passing a second argument to the callback right here. So I'm remember, the second argument is a void pointer. So I have to pass, if I'm, for example, in this case I'm passing a string, I have to pass the address of the string because I'm passing it to a pointer. So that's why I've got address of s. And here, I cannot dereference a void pointer. By the way, just to let you know, this is, this is like a, a restriction on FLTK, is that I'll, I'll show you the... Um, documentation for the call. So here I am at the FLTK documentation. Let's click on documentation here, FLTK.org, and we'll scroll down. Now, 1.4 isn't quite released yet, but 1.38 is. So we'll, we'll go to 1.38. We'll go to classes. We'll go to class index here, and we'll go to W for the widget. And all widgets have a callback. So let's scroll down to callback. 
and this is alphabetical. So notice here that there's a, the, the callback functions uh, overloaded. So we can pass either just a function or we can pass a function and a void pointer. So if we go to this one, click on more here, sets the current callback function, right? And there's our void pointer. So when we go to our code here, we know that this second argument is the void pointer. In order to be able to dereference a void pointer, we have to cast it to a specific type. Now we know we're passing the address of s, and s is a string, so we're going to cast it here to a string pointer. And we're going to declare a string pointer sp. Then in the callback function, we're going to dereference sp so we can print out what's in the string. In this case, it's hello world. So let's go ahead and run this code. Let's get out of it. And then we'll compile it. And this is example two. And let's run it. So now when I click click me, it should also print something down here with a C out statement. And it does. It prints out hello world. Here is another program, an example program. Before I show you the code for this one, I think it's more interesting here if I actually show you uh, what the run of this program looks like. So let me get out of it and let's compile test2. And now let's run it. Okay, so now you see this is actually a it's actually a grid. And if I click on a box, it says hi and it puts a label in the box as well. If I click on another box, it puts the Now by the way, these these numbers, I think you can figure out what they are. Okay? I have 4 by 4, so that's 16, 0 to 15. Now let's go take a look at the code and see if we can understand how this is accomplished. So let's go down to main first, and we'll come back up later. First things first, um, I'm creating a vector of FL buttons. Okay, then and the, it's called butts, and then I'm resizing, I'm resizing uh, the butts vector to be a two-dimensional vector. Obviously, it's a two-dimensional vector, right? Because it's a vector of a vector. But here I'm setting the size to four, and then I'm setting the si the size of each internal one to four as well. If we don't use resize here. The way I would have to accomplish this is I would have to push back a temporary vector here on line 42. And then I would have to push back FL buttons on the heap, new FL buttons, to temp, set the callback. And then afterwards, I would have to push back that temporary vector into the big vector to make it a two-dimensional vector. However, since I have resize on line 30, I can bypass all that and just access the vectors directly with their row and column or, or with their two-dimensional indices. So I can now say butts RC equals new FL button. Why? Because I've already set the size to be 4x4 four four on line 30. So that's, that's a, I, personally, I think it's nicer to do this this way rather than the, the commented out code here in green that you see. Um, yeah. So by the way, let's, let's talk about the callback here because this is really kind of an interesting 
example. So let's take a look at the callback here for each button. Now we are creating these buttons and notice we're setting the locations of the buttons. Now let me not skip the constructor here. The locations of the button, the X and the Y location, is based on the, the nested loop. OK, I'm in, an, I'm in a nested loop, right, for R and for C. So therefore, I'm going to use those nested loop indices to change the location of each newly created button that I'm going to be placing inside the grid. So that's an easy way of, of making a grid. It's really nice. Now let's come to the interesting part, the callback. Now the callback function is foo. So let's go up and take a look at foo. Um, by the way, before, something, I, I did kind of skip over something. And what I did skip over here is are these lines here, uh, 32 to 34. What is that? I am creating uh, an integer array, 16 big, and I am assigning the array to 0 to 15. Now, why am I doing that? You'll, f you'll find out in a second. Okay? Um, let's go up here and let's take a look at foo. So foo, this is the callback function. Notice that I am accepting a void pointer as the second argument. And I am casting v into an integer pointer. And I'm creating an integer pointer i. And then what am I doing? Here I'm creating a character array of eight characters. And I am taking i. So th this line here, this sprintf, is actually converting convert integer to uh, C string. Okay? So obviously I'm assuming that the integer is not more than is not going to be more than eight characters long. I just can't, you know, it's I, it's a four by four, so I mean, I only need two really, because six the digit sixteen or fifteen only has two digits. But I, I just for whatever reason I I just chose eight characters to be the the size of s. Now, once I've done that, I can set because remember I cannot I cannot um, set the label of a widget to an integer, it must be a C string. By the way, it cannot be a C++ string. So just as, a, just as a side note, here I'll put a note in. If you use, if using a C++ string, okay, you can, you can use dot C underscore str to convert, right? You can say use dot c string to convert c++ string to c string because and the reason for that is because uh, label takes a c string it takes a character array okay that's the that's the purpose of that so you can still use a c++ string you don't have to use a character array there and it's actually I would say it's probably easier to convert in C++ between um, string to integer. I think there's actually some, uh, I forget the function names, but they're easy to look up. Anyways, uh, here's my point. Why am I using copy label and not label? Well, let's find out here. Let's change that to label. And you can see I put a comment there. I must use copy label because I'm, I'm creating this character array inside the function foo. And when the foo goes out of scope, that character array is no longer going to exist because it's on the stack. 
So watch this. Let's now compile it. And let's run it. No. OK, now watch this. Do you see how this changes to garbage? That changes to garbage. The reason for this is because now the widget itself is not keeping a copy of the label. So this all became this all came about because all I ch oops, all I changed Let's go back here. There we go. All I changed was from label I changed copy label to label. So what does copy label do? Well, copy label actually what it does is it puts that string s into the widget. So the widget now stores, it makes a copy of the label because if we just rely on this, if this goes out of scope, which it does, it's, it's no longer going to uh, put, the, put the correct string in the widget after it, when it gets redrawn. So lesson learned, use copy label in, in situations like this. Um, now let's think about something. What argument am I sending? By the way, let's just, before we jump into uh, the input guy, let's go back to here. And all I wanted to really do, like when I run this, all I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to have this argument here. So what did I try first? This is what I tried first. And this didn't work. Let's think about this for a second. Okay? Cuz this this would actually work in Python. So if I come down to this line here and I replace r plus x ar. By the way, what's ar? It's this. Right? And think about what ar is. Ar is a pointer. Okay? But before I do that, let's put this in and, let, and watch what happens. If I go address of x, okay, now look, look at this. Where is x? x is here. x is 0. This would totally work in Python. Int x equals 0. Yep. And then x plus plus. But you see, I cannot pass x here. I cannot pass x. I have to pass a pointer. Callbacks can only take second argument as a pointer. There is one other callback function that uh, one of my students just suggested we could use, and that is the second argument is accepts a long. So instead of uh, this is the more traditional way of passing information to the callback, but we could utilize this overloaded version of callback and the code would look like this where we would send x and then increase x and we're now going to make x a long and when I come up here to the function we're simply going to well I'm just trying to convert here from uh, along to a C string. So I, I'm sure there's probably a better way to do this, but I'm, I've just converted it, the, the long to a C++ string, and then I changed the C++ string here to a C string. In any case, uh, this does work because when I run this, I'll compile it, and I'll run it. It works OK. So that's one way to do it. OK, let's go back to my kind of the example that I had before 
uh, the other suggestion, and that was, let's say that I here, where was I? Um, oh yeah, right, right down here, I passed the address of x. This is something, as I was saying, I could do in Python. Now I can't pass x, although, as I mentioned, one of my students found that you can pass x because that's one of the overloaded callback functions. But more importantly, consider it this way. That just happens to work for an integer. What if there's a different type of an object that you want to pass? You always have to pass the address of something. The void pointer is the typical way you pass things to a callback. But notice that because I'm passing the address here, even though I'm incrementing x, look what, well, look what happens when I run this program. If I compile it and run it, now everything has the last value. They all have 16. Now this is this is because I've passed the the address. So therefore, the way that I got around this is I said, okay, 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 okay. Listen, this did not work. So instead of because I still have to pass a pointer, what I decided to do is I said, okay, fine. I'm going to make an array, which by the way is a pointer. And I'm going to set that array up to B. So in other words, if I kind of give you a, a representation here of what this array actually is, the array is going to be, um, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? And so on uh, up to 15. So now, if I pass that, but remember, since this is an array and AR points to the first element of this array, right? AR is an integer array, but the AR name is also a pointer. I can now do pointer arithmetic here by going AR plus X. Now what's x? x is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. But remember, that's pointer arithmetic, so I'm actually going to be adding the size of an integer, which, by the way, in terms of memory addresses, is like plus 4 every time. It increments. So now, when I do this, and I pass ar plus x to here, now look what happens. Now when I compile it and I run it, it works. You see? So that's, my, that's what I was trying to get to. That's the, that's the reason why I actually created this array here on line 34 to 36 is because now I have an array. These are these guys can be accessed through pointer arithmetic, and my x is just simply adding to the pointer value ar, and it's going to give me a different value each time. So that's one way to do it. Um, the problem the problem with this situation here is what if we create a window and we have many widgets and we want to be able to access all of them so this is this is a problem that we have in C++